Well, hello, and welcome to One Man's Faith today. My name is Neil Owen, as you can see there, and glad to have you with me. And we're going to be looking again at Colossians. I think we're going to be here forever. Uh, but don't hold me to that. Uh, before we get started, though, let me just say uh, uh, two things. On the 27th, oh, he went ahead and put it up there, so I'll go ahead and do that one first. Our next movie will be To Save a Life, and that'll be Tuesday, April 5th at 7 o'clock. Bring some friends and come on out. It's a free movie, and I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, and the week before that, Resurrection Sunday, which we lovingly call Easter, uh, is on the 27th, and um, there will be several uh, sunrise services, and I just want to mention the one that I know about, and that is... Uh, the one at Petrick Park, 6.30 in the morning. So if, if you would like to go to a, resur a sunrise service, then uh, come on out to Petrick Park at 6.30 in the morning. It'll last about an hour. And I know there are a couple of places that will be having a pancake breakfast. So you don't even have to go home. You can go and... Uh, I think they're free, if I remember correctly. So we'll let you know when you come to the sunrise service. <laughs> How is that for getting you there? All right. No, seriously, if you'd like to come, we'd love to have you. Uh, 6.30 on the 27th. That's a.m., just to remind you. 6.30 in the morning at Petrick Park. We'll have it on the basketball court there. Uh, just behind the Bob Rudd Center. Okay. So, we let's go and turn to Colossians. We've been studying Colossians. We, we are about to finish chapter 1. Only, what, seven or eight weeks later. Um, but there's a lot of stuff in here. And we have gone through, stopped, looked at a passage, you know, got a little further, looked at a passage... I want to go back and I want to review just so we know, because remember, this is a letter too. Paul gives us a lot of good stuff. And so as we went through, we stopped and looked at what he was saying, not just in relation to what he was saying to the uh, Colossians, but just in relation to what it meant when he said what he said. And so as we started through, he says, he says, after he gave his little introduction about to from Paul or to the Colossians from Paul, he says, we give thanks since we heard of your faith and love. He was excited to know that they were walking in faith and in love. And he said, for this reason, for the reason that we heard of your faith and love, we have not ceased to pray and pray that you would be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding I somehow left out something so that so that you may walk in a manner worthy of the Lord to bear fruit, to increase in the knowledge of God, to be strengthened with all power, always giving thanks. Okay? He was praying, and he, he says, we will not cease to pray that you would be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you can walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. This, I think this is the, this really is the crux of his whole letter. So that you will be filled with, uh, so you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, uh, bearing fruit in all good works, filled with his understanding and filled with his power and giving thanks in everything. Okay? That to me is the crux of what he's saying in his whole letter. 
And he goes on, he says, for he has rescued you from the domain of darkness and transferred you into the kingdom of his beloved son. He has transferred us. And through him we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. And he has qualified us to share in the inheritance. He, and he goes on, he says, here's why you can share, because he is the image of the invisible God. Hebrews says that he is the exact representation. And by him all things were created. He is before all things. Through him all things hold together. He is the head of the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. Although you were formerly alienated and hostile in mind, he has reconciled you. In other words, he has paid the price in order to present you before him holy, blameless, and beyond reproach. <clears throat> the king of the universe allowed his son to become like you and me so that so that he could be the firstborn from the dead. In other words, the first man to be resurrected. No other man had yet been resurrected. But Jesus died. He stayed, if you remember, three days in the ground. And then on the third day, he rose again. He, he did not just come up out of the grave as a person who would then have to die again later. He came out with a new body, a resurrected body. That body could eat, but yet it could walk through walls. This is what we will have when he comes again. You and I will have a resurrected body, an eternal resurrected body. If you know who Jesus is, if you've made him Lord of your life. If not, your spirit will be tormented, as the, that's what the Bible tells us. We have got to know who Jesus is. Not just know who he is, but we've got to let him be Lord of our lives. And so it's an important point to understand. See, this son who was with God from the beginning. He even created everything. Through him, everything was created. For him, everything was created. And by him, everything was created. This master craftsman, as Proverbs 8 calls him, gave up all of that to be like you and me, so he could die for you and me and be resurrected before you and me to set up everything. That's what this first chapter is all about here. And, and he goes on, he says, and he did all this so that you would be holy, blameless, and beyond reproach. Or as the uh, Passion Bible says, holy, flawless, and restored. That's what he did. He restored us. We talked about that last time, about the fact that, that Jesus, through his death, as he said, he transferred us from the domain of darkness to the kingdom of his beloved son. We became, we were old creatures, we became new creatures, we died and were reborn so that we could leave it all behind and be children of God. All right? And Paul goes on and says, I rejoice in my sufferings 
that I share on his behalf because he was made a minister of the mystery. That has been hidden, and that is Christ in you. And I want to look at that today. We're going to, we're going to look at, at, this, at this mystery. He says in verse 25, this is the very reason I've been made a minister by the authority of God and to serve to his body, so that in his detailed plane I would fully equip you with the word of God. There is a divine mystery, a secret surprise that has been concealed from the world for generations. But now it's been revealed, unfolded, and manifested for every holy believer to experience. Living within you is the Christ who floods you with the expectations of glory. This mystery of Christ embedded within us becomes a heavenly treasure chest of hope filled with the riches of glory for His people. And God wants everyone to know it. Christ is our message. We preach to awaken hearts and bring every person into the full understanding of the truth. That was uh, 25 to about 29 of, of chapter 1. But there is a divine mystery. Now, you know, I like mysteries. I like to watch mysteries. I'd rather watch mysteries than uh, chick flicks. As you, some of you may, my wife likes chick flicks. I like mysteries. I like to try and solve things. Matter of fact, there used to be a reality show. It was based on the, based on Clue, trying to figure out who done it. I, and I think the title of it was Who Done It. It was kind of a reality show. And it was a, it was a murder mystery. Uh, and you had to try and solve along with the other con other uh, contestants in it, who done it? Who, who, was, who was the murderer? Because uh, it was one of the 12 that were there. All right, so we've got to stop right there. But I like mysteries. And so the mystery is this, how long will it take for me to come back? I'll be right back. <laughs> 